cost China the Olympics is human rights. Some argued that in the interests of world politics and trade, Beijing should have got the games. But it seems the Western members of the IOC weren't prepared to forget Tiananmen Square and other human rights abuses. What you're about to see is an example of the human rights abuses that the world is objecting to. Political prisons called Lao Gai, where dissidents are sent for re-education and used as forced labour. They're put to work making products for China's booming export industry, products that sometimes finish up in Australia. <laughs> This is the China most visitors get to see, the temples, the ancient culture, the smiling faces of 1.2 billion Chinese people. But what the government here doesn't want you to see is the 16 to 20 million of its own people imprisoned in labour camps. Prisoners who don't keep up their work quota are starved and tortured to keep up the production of this last massive communist system. I was kicked, beaten up, and put in solitary confinement. Tang Bo Zhao was one of the leaders of the democracy movement in China. After the massacre in Tiananmen Square, he was thrown into prison. If he didn't work hard enough, he was tortured. I was beaten a number of times, and the guards used electric batons on me. They shock you in your eyes, your ears, your nose, your mouth, and your leg. To get an electric shock on the head is very painful. And these two young men, the Li brothers, were also tortured in jail after Tiananmen Square. It was very painful. One policeman stood in front of me and one behind me. And whenever I refused to answer a question, one of them hit me with an electric prod. The shock made me tremble. I couldn't sit still. It was unbearable. When Hitler came to power in Germany, black books were smuggled out of the Gestapo prisons to alert the world to the monstrous tortures being carried out by the Nazis. Again, when the Soviet dissidents smuggled out their underground reports from the gulags, most people did not listen. Now, from here in China, we have a new version of the black books, this time detailing the torture and slave labour in China's own vast gulag. I spent 19 years in the Lao Gai system. Harry Wu has written a book about his years in the Chinese gulag, the Lao Gai. He was a university professor, jailed for criticizing the communist system. Because I was arrested and sent to the camp, my mother was committed suicide. My brother also, he lost a job, he lost a future, and was beaten, beaten by the Red Guard, damaged the brand, and finally, in 1989, was beaten to death by the Beijing police. Harry Wu survived the gulag and was given asylum in America. But to show us the horrors of the labor camps, he took a terrific risk and went back with a hidden camera. Not far from Beijing, he saw prisoners digging canals as he had. And the memories came flooding back. Each uh, labor day, you have your labor quarter. If you cannot complete your quarter, you will got to torture. Simply remove your food and hand you up and torture. Did you feel during this that you were going to break, to give in to them? Uh, yes, I feel myself as an uh, Israeli break, but uh, because I was sentenced to life, I don't know uh, what is the future, what is... Uh, there's no light in front of me, no hope, no wish in front of me. I don't know. You know. So I like to say a lot of time I just, uh, just like a beast. As Harry Wu's pictures show, the Chinese use their prisoners for the dirtiest and most dangerous work. He posed as a businessman, ready to buy goods for the West. 
In a leather factory, he secretly filmed prisoners ordered to wade naked in vats of alkaline solution. And here's one of the workshops in the chemical processing. The prisoners forced to took off all the cloths and need jump in the chemical tank to process the chemical stuff. And this is one of the prison where prisoners when I went in the workshop, he saw some strangers coming, he wanted to hide, and he's ready to jump in the chemical tanks. Harry like Wu also found evidence that Chinese prisoners are making diesel engines which end up in Australia. In Honan province, there's a in factory name is Xinxiang Diesel Engine Factory. Actually, it's the number two prison of uh, Honan province. They export to Pakistan, Australia, and also Kenya. Sure enough, as Harry Wu said, we found plenty of 195 diesels at this importer's warehouse in Sydney. These engines have proved very particularly um, uh, popular in the mines, Apple Mines, Cooper uh, Pedy, Lightning Ridge, Ruby Vale, and also amongst the farmers for water pumping. Uh, the motors are very, very cheap. Aussie Flores has been selling Chinese machinery for 18 years. Yeah. Everything you see in this shed is effectively from the People's Republic of China. Aussie's uh, been to China and has seen the factory where his diesels are made. And when you cast your eye over the factory, you saw these, you saw these fellows uh, sitting in the blue, in the, the blue work clothes here. Yeah, did, I did. Did any of those people look like prisoners to you? Not to me. They all looked healthy, happy and well fed. Did the factory itself look like a prison factory? Not in the least. No guards, no watchtowers. No guards, no watchtowers. But plenty of brick walls. But Harry Wu says the prison workshops are cunningly disguised. This is the entrance of the factory. The sign was say Shanghai Laodong Stew Pipe. We didn't see any difference. No police guard, no watchtower. But if you walk to the backyard, this is the back view of the factory. It's hard to say exactly which Chinese diesels are being made by prisoners and which ones are being turned out by their regular factories. But according to Harry Wu, it's not only diesels that are coming to us from the Chinese gulag. He says one third of China's tea is harvested by prisoners. And not only that, machines, cheap tools and leather goods are all being turned out by that prison labour. And if those men don't keep up their quota for export to us, the prisoners are tortured. Very common torture is put you in the confinement. From my experience, I was in a small confinement, three feet wide, three feet high, six feet long, made by cement. In front have an iron bar, that's it. No blanket, no straw. At the first beginning, uh, first three days, no food. This is, this is confinement regulation. As well as being tortured himself, Harry will never forget execution. seeing the execution and of fellow and prisoners. And I saw 45 posts, small posts, and suddenly I saw the two police just forced each prisoner stand in front of the post. And suddenly there's a 45 military police each one have a rifle, just make a line and stand behind the prisoners. And the police, two police, force, kick on the back of the nail, force the prisoners to kneel down, and just kneel it down, and they separate it, and the military police pull the rifle just behind the head, boom, shoot it. 45 shots in one sound, and his other body fall it down. I think I, I, I like to emphasize my experience, my story is not very special. Many, many Chinese have the same experience as me in the past 40 years. You can find a lot. They're suffering, their family is suffering under the cool communism system.